Hey everybody and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. My name is Sid. I'm a first year computer science major at Georgia Tech and in today's video I'm going to be talking to you about the four apps that I use every day as a computer science major. Now three of these apps can be used by anybody. You don't have to be a computer science major and I guarantee the level of your workflow. But the last one is just the IDE I use so obviously it'll only be applicable to people that code every day. Anyways the reason that I picked only four is because any more than that and my productivity workflow seems to get really complicated and I spend more time switching in between apps than actually getting work done. So without further ado, let's get straight into it by talking about the centerpiece of my entire workflow, Notion. So if you spent any time in the productivity circle of the internet on the YouTube side, the Twitter side, Reddit or whatever, then you've probably heard of Notion. And Notion is basically like Google Docs on steroids. You can get so much done with it, it has everything you really need from just being able to take plain old notes to making tables and databases to store your to-do list items, projects that you're doing, reading material that you've ta taken a look at. You can do almost everything you really want to with Notion. Now what I do with Notion is I use it to keep track of all my assignments for the semester um, and do some test, re test prep and review for my classes. I just look through my syllabus at the beginning of the semester for each of my classes and then I input all of my assignments into this really big Notion database with dates and stuff so that I can view them on a calendar and see how many assignments that I do each week so that it gets, helps me focus on what I have to get done and really helps me stop being overwhelmed from everything because I know exactly what I have to get done, when I have to get it done, and how I'm going to get it done because of Notion. I also use it to keep track of my YouTube projects uh, in a very similar way. I come up with YouTube ideas, I put them in a Notion database, I add a date to them of when I want to have the video out by so that I can figure out when I have to film it, when I have to edit it, when I have to make the thumbnail, all of that good stuff. And that really helps me keep track of my YouTube stuff. I also use it to keep track of a lot of different things in my life, like budgeting, uh, people that I'm tutoring, you know, I take notes on the people that I'm tutoring so I can figure out how best to help them. I use it to do a lot of different things. It's also a great project management tool if you're working on coding a project with other people you can use it to come up with like the documentation for your project you can use it to add useful links so that everybody in your team has access to everything at once you can use it to do a lot of awesome things and if you want to learn more about notion i'll be making a video later called how i organize my productivity life in 2022 as a cs major and i'll just be talking about how i use notion along with this other app obsidian which is up next to actually get work done and i'll go into a much more detailed explanation of my workflow then so without further ado let's get into obsidian so this nice app that you see in the background behind me is Obsidian, and it's basically what I use for everything that I don't do in Notion. Now, one thing that I don't do in Notion, and this is really important, is take notes. And that's because Notion, as good as it is for project management and keeping track of to-do list items and such, I just don't find it very great to take notes with just because it's kind of slow, to be honest. Like, sometimes it takes time to load up. If you're using it on your phone, it takes time to load up. And Obsidian is a lot better as a note-taking app. Basically what it is, is it just opens up a text file for you and you just start taking notes. Uh, it's very simple, very fast because it's just a text file that you're taking notes in. And it's really cool because what it lets you do is create backlinks in between your notes. So it lets you connect your notes so that you can see how your like past lectures match up with your new lectures so you can make connections in between them. And then you can view them on a graph view that looks something like this. And now you're able to be like, oh my God, I can see this connection between in, between this concept and this concept. And that like creates a new pathway in your brain. And now you're actually understanding the concepts a lot better. I also use Obsidian not just to take notes for lectures. I use it to take notes on books that I'm reading, podcasts that I've listened to, or like even like a movie or YouTube video that I watched that I really liked. And I want to like take some inspiration or key ideas from. It's really great and honestly, ever since I started using Obsidian, I find it a lot more enjoyable to take notes and study because it, the process is just so clean that it's fun. And honestly, that's what you should really be looking for when you're trying to find like some app or something that'll make your productivity workflow better. Make it so that it's kind of making your boring, mo monotonous work fun in a weird, twisted way. Now let's talk about the third thing that I use every day. Now you might consider this to be kind of stupid because it's Gmail and basically everybody uses Gmail every day anyways, but I think I use Gmail a little bit differently than most people, so allow me to explain my quirkiness. Uh, basically, the way I use Gmail is once I get an email, I will either immediately act on it and then archive it or delete it so that there's nothing in my inbox or I'll leave it in my inbox to be taken care of later or just archive it into a into the right folder to be taken care of. The way I treat my Gmail is kind of as something that should have zero emails in it at all times. My inbox should my inbox should be empty at all times. 
I consider every email that I get a task that I have to do. And most of the time the emails are pretty stupid anyways. It's just companies emailing me, telling me to update my password or telling me about this new promotion that they have. Most, But sometimes I actually get important emails that I have to respond to. And then I sort them based on a few different categories that I have over here. I have my own personal life, which is just named after me. And this is my personal brand. So this includes things like my YouTube uh, and a lot of other things. I have one for work, which includes things like internships. Um, and I have a lot of different other folders that I use to organize my entire life basically into these buckets where I sort my emails into so that then I'm able to more accurately respond to these emails and able to assign them like priority levels. If I ever want to just like ignore an email completely, I can be like, yeah, I don't need to respond to that. It's not something important. And that's essentially how I use Gmail to keep productive. I just use it to uh, get all my tasks from my emails and then sort them into all of these different folders. And then I can respond to them at my leisure based on how important I deem them to be based on what folder they're in. I think that's pretty cool. And if you want to learn more about Inbox Zero, I can make a video about it. Let me know if you want to see that, leave, leave a comment down below, or I'll link a video by Nathaniel Drew in my comments down below. And that is awesome. And I really suggest you guys go check it out. Inbox Zero, I've been doing this for like two and a half years. And it's honestly just a lot of fun because it just makes it more enjoyable to look at my email because there's nothing there. Time for last but not least. This is the fourth lab that I use every day and it's definitely the most important to a computer science major, I guess. It's my IDE. I use VS Code. Now you might be like, oh, VS Code isn't an IDE, it's a text editor. But if you put in enough plugins, which you ha have a ton of, then it becomes an IDE basically. You can debug, you can do a lot of cool stuff in it. But VS Code is just what I use to code in. Uh, it's what I use to make all of my projects, whether it be for uh, homework for class, whether it be a side project that I'm doing in React, whether it's anything really. I edit all my code in VS Code. Sometimes I use IntelliJ if I'm working on a project for a Java class because it makes things a little bit easier. But most of the time I'm using VS Code. And honestly, if you're watching this video and you've been coding for a while, you also probably already US use VS Code. I think it's the most popular, one of the most popular text editors that there is for coders. And that's for a reason. It's lightweight, it's really fast. It has a lot of great plugins that you can use to do everything that you could do in a full-fledged IDE. It has really great uh, IntelliSense and autocomplete. It has great colored themes that you can look at because that's very important. You need to enjoy what you're looking at. My current theme looks pretty nice according to me. Um, and here's a picture of it up on the screen. But I just love using VS Code. It's a lot of fun. Um, I just like it better than things like Atom. I can't really pinpoint a reason why I like it better than Atom or Sublime Text. Uh, I just do because I think it feels faster to me. Uh, I like the way that my VS Code is set up. And overall, it's just a very enjoyable experience. So if you're a computer science major planning to start coding, uh, then get VS Code as your text editor. I recommend it. And a lot of other people do as well. And that's it. That's my fourth and final app. So let's just review everything I've talked about really quick. So first of all, those are the four apps that I use. These are the four apps that I use every day as a computer science major. As you can see, nothing crazy. You've probably heard of mostly all of these before. And if you want like a more detailed explanation of how I use Obsidian and Notion, especially, I have two videos up already uh, on my YouTube channel. I'll leave links to them in the description down below. And you should also see one of them up here in the corner. But my workflow is updated a lot since then. So I'll be posting a new one uh, sometime next week. So if you want to see that, hit that subscribe button. But anyways, these four apps are what I use and what you use can be very different. But what I want you to take away from this video is that regardless of what you use, the end goal of your productivity workflow should be to make your work uh, seem less like work so that you're able to get it done quickly. And you know, that might seem a little bit weird um, because you know, at the end of the day, work isn't meant to be fun, uh, at least the work that you get in school, but it's best to try and make it as fun as possible so you can get through the drudgery as quick as possible. And another thing is that, you know, you aren't using your productivity workflow just for school or like your job that you hate. You're using it. You can use it for things that you actually enjoy doing, like making videos, writing stories, whatever. You can use it so that it makes it easier for you to do things. And the best way to do that is by using a simple workflow like I showed in this video. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, join my Discord server, link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.